What's up guys, Lloyd here back again with another video and if you're new to my channel, I make tech videos and all that stuff. Anyways, in today's video, I am actually doing something a little bit different than my usual content, aka just shooting it raw, using my iPhone, no fancy editing, not a lot of fancy b-rolls and stuff. Just giving you guys my overall thoughts about my Aerial Rider X-Class 52V 18 amp hour version. This one is the first 52V version that they've made for the X-Class and then most recently around May 2022 or so, uh, they upgraded it slightly to a different components and all that stuff for the Aerial Rider X-Class. Now quick disclaimer, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. This is just my pure thoughts, honest opinion after reaching 1000 miles for my Aerial Rider X-Class. Now, I already reviewed my Aerial Rider X-Class actually. If you guys haven't seen that and if you're new to my channel, I'll link it up here and uh, maybe down in the description as well as pinned in the comments. And you guys can check out my full review of the Aerial Rider X-Class with all the fancy editing and all that stuff. But anyways, as you can see at the um, speedometer right here, we, or rather I, have reached 1,000 18.7 miles and I've owned my Aerial Rider X-Class since mid-May 2022. So today is November 12, 2022 and uh, yeah, I hit 1,000 miles about a week ago. So first thing that I want to cover first real quick here is the seat. Um, you know, if you're going to be riding your bike for long periods of time, you got to have a comfortable seat. So this isn't actually the original seat that came with the Aerial Rider X-Class. This came from eBay. I think the seller's name is Hippo Fighter 18. But uh, I'll flash a screen of my original Aerial Rider X-Class seat right here. And uh, yeah, just you guys can check that out right now. And but anyways, that was really uncomfortable for me, especially for riding long periods of time, you know, going 30 to 40 miles. And I figured to why not shop for slightly comfier and a lot more cushion seat and so I found Hippo Fighter 18 and not only that it's uh, comfortable but it's also nice and long you know, it's a long saddle so I can actually sit my girlfriend at the back here or me at the back while she rides the bike and stuff like that and just have a tandem ride kind of quality the other thing that I want to cover too are the tires so the front and back so the front one looks amazing right now actually it looks brand new for 1000 miles but if we come over to the back though yeah, uh, it's kind of shedding a little bit. It's not that bad though, at least not yet. Um, but I am bound to replace these pretty soon. I actually have a tire that is on the way now. I just got it off of Amazon, but basically it's just another off-roading tire. And I did order a Zugo bike street tire that is on its way as well uh, sometime next month in December, just because of the shipping delays. But I do break a lot using the back tire wheel and stuff like that hence why the back tires are a lot more worn off than the front one overall though overall though i don't have any problems with these tires they work amazing i love the grips i love how they hold up in off-road conditions in the rain and everything like that so no problem with them they are cst brand uh, you know the ones that came with aerial rider itself and surprisingly enough um, and maybe it's just me, I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate from this, but I don't have any like Tannis armor, whatever armor stuff, armadillo slime put in this tire. I've just been really lucky. Like I haven't gotten any punctures or anything, knock on wood. But yeah, I, I just don't have those. Literally just the tire, the tubes and air. Uh, and that's me just riding it 1000 miles, obviously. I do change it out as far as like the air goes. I do deflate it and then inflate it back again um, once every three weeks or so here just so that, I don't know, it's just me. I'm a little bit weird like that. I just like to reset the air pressure and stuff like that with it. And I keep it at about 28 PSI. I know some people go higher, some people go lower, but my sweet spot is 28 PSI for the tires and they've been working fantastic. Now I know some people too, they use like Shinko tires, which is like motorcycle tires. And then there's like the E Huntsman, whatever the, the V tires one that are like hybrid, you know, for, for uh, 
e-bikes and stuff like that that can be used for off-road and on-road and stuff really quiet apparently but these works fine they, they don't have any problems so yeah there's really not much to replace as far as the tires go they are fantastic but i do have the amazon order coming in for the street tires for the back part only just because i don't really need to replace the front one but do you guys know what's worth replacing your wallet real quick guys thanks to exter for partnering with me on this video and these wallet are by far some of the coolest smart and minimalist wallet out right now I just love how thin and elegant they are. I mean, that's like $500 in cash right here, plus 10 cards right now. And you can barely tell that it's in my pocket actually. So this is my old wallet right here. And it has the same amount of cash and all the same cards. Literally, I just transferred it. But you can barely close this thing and look how chunky this is. And trust me folks, that is not the right type of bulge you want. Chunky, old school, bifold wallet, slim and minimalist wallet. Now these wallet looks super simple, but they have so many designs to choose from on their website. And if you choose to add in the extra tracker accessory that they got, it will completely transform your entire wallet experience, bringing you from 1900s to the modern era. The carbon fiber card holder is my favorite one. They have another design pattern on their website called Carbon Forge, and it may look flimsy, but don't let that fool you because this thing is made out of 3K space grade woven carbon, which is basically translates to it being super tough. My second favorite is the Parliament wallet. I love the all around design. They have a bunch of other colors available on their website and it's made out of environmentally friendly certified leather which is super high quality to the touch. So make sure you guys go to extra.com using my link down in the description and use code LloydSim for up to 35% off on all orders especially this early Black Friday sale that they're having right now. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, so now you may have noticed that I changed out the handlebar uh, grips and stuff like that. So this isn't actually the stock Aerial Rider X-Class handlebar. Uh, they actually have their own. Uh, it's a leather kind, so I'll pop it out in the screen right now. But those were uncomfortable, not gonna lie. Um, so hence why I changed this out. So I used to actually have the OD brand. Uh, I'll link it down in the description as well if you guys are interested. But personally for me, um, I didn't like the OD just because uh, there's a lot of trimming involved and also just the whole grip. It's just weird for me. So I changed it out to this one where I can actually just, you know, adjust the tightness and stuff like that. And also just kind of uniform it in a way that I can manipulate the type of grips that is comfortable for my hand. Overall, these are pretty good. Uh, they're pretty cheap too. Got it on Amazon and stuff. So yeah, I love them. So the next one that I want to cover is actually the handlebar. Well, not the handlebar. The handlebar is still the same, but rather the stem that holds the handlebar itself. So I don't actually know the brand. I'll link it down in the description. Actually, all the stuff that I have here, I will link it down in the description in case you're interested. But anyways, this um, stem, whatever handlebar stem thing uh, is adjustable uh, all the way down and all the way up, like literally straight up like that. Uh, but basically why I changed that out and I didn't stick with the original one. Uh, well, this is the overall stance is just hurting my back. And as I said, kind of like with the seat right here, you know, you don't want to be riding uncomfortable for long periods of time. And you're gonna, just gonna have a lot of pains, guys, trust me. But anyways, I got this stem right here. I don't know what angle this is, but basically I just made it higher compared to the original stem uh, so that I can have just that comfortable ride for long periods of time. I actually did a range test a few months ago, actually a month and a half ago. Um, and I rode this bike for about 70 miles round trip. Now going back to the topic of comfort guys, not only from the seat to the handlebar height and stuff like that, but let's talk about these shocks. So this one, I actually changed it back to the original stock shocks that it came with. I'm not sure what the brand is, but uh, I actually was tweaking it out a little bit a while ago just because this is 1000 pounds rated and I was like, I'm pretty light, I don't need 1,000 pounds. So I changed it out to Exaform 291R uh, for like a week, uh, which was great. But then when my girlfriend started riding with me, uh, we were just basically feeling all the bumps and everything like that. So I changed it back to the original stock shocks right here. Again, I don't know what the brand is, but it seems pretty high quality. 
uh, but overall it's a coil spring stuff like that and then there's like this adjustable um, rebound thing right here to adjust the firmness and uh, you know just how much uh, of a rebound and stuff like that you want for the shock so I obviously adjusted it to what fits me my riding style and also um, I'm able to adjust it when my girlfriend is riding with me so that you know we, it absorbs a lot of the bumps and stuff while we're both riding together moving on to the front forks though these are amazing I don't really know what brand they are either but these are the stock like forks and stuff and obviously <laughs> I just added a bunch of stickers uh, for like reflective purposes uh, they don't come with that by the way but um, yeah these are adjustable um, it's great especially if you're off-roading or you know you traverse both pavements and off-road from time to time and so these are super great with that I'm able to adjust it to the uh, right quality that I want and uh, right now they're set to uh, I guess you know somewhat of a hybrid off-road slash pavement uh, but from time to time I do make it nice and stiff uh, when I'm just riding on pure trails of uh, pavements and stuff like that and if I'm taking it out in the back roads, you know, as in like rough terrains, you know, a little bit of a um, muds and stuff like that I do make the shocks a little bit um, softer and more bouncier so I can basically just kind of float while riding it it's really nice another one too that you may have noticed is uh, the headlights right here so I talked about this in my full review video but originally, I actually forgot where they're situated. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they're situated usually right over here. So they're aiming like right here. So I moved it up right here, um, mainly because I just like to have the higher lights aiming um, and stuff like that. And also, for some reason, when they were down here, just the whole visibility wasn't good enough for me. And so with this one right here, I don't know if you guys can see it really good, but it's actually angled down a little bit so it's not like right at the drivers you know pedestrians faces and stuff like that so it's not like straight beam pattern but rather it's actually slightly pointed down but to the point where I'm able to see uh, you know a couple maybe a hundred or so plus feet in front of me instead of not being able to see what I'm lighting up and stuff like that so it's really great I'm able to predict yeah, well not predict but I'm able to see the bumps and stuff like that ahead of time instead of when they were positioned at their original location down there so move it up and basically that took care of everything uh, as far as night riding goes with visibility and stuff like that now I already covered this in like two of my videos the full review as well as the range test that I did but this is probably the most standout like I guess modification here uh, it's because you know it's massive and <laughs> it's quite of an interesting shape. It's a triangle battery by Unit Pack Power Battery, and uh, yeah, I basically bought this like two weeks after purchasing my Aerial Rider e-bike. But basically, uh, as I said earlier, um, this is the 52V 18 amp hour version. So they have the newer version now. It's like 19 something amp hours. It's like just one amp hour higher than the original um, or rather the uh, the older version uh, which is this one right here but what I find though is that without this mod right here I actually tested it out I was only able to get on throttle only mode 20 I think 24 25 miles of range that's only throttle so I'm not like pedaling at all I'm just using the full-on throttle right there and so I was like this isn't gonna cut it and so yeah I did some of my research and stuff like that and found that you can actually hook up pretty easily a second battery mod for the Aerial Rider X class so this is the 52V I believe 0 to 2000 no 0 to 1500 watt um, you know power and stuff like that 20 amp hour life capacity and uh, to hook it up I actually use an FBC battery blender combiner or whatever you call this from uh, Electromotive Mods right here. I'll link them down in the description to support their business and stuff. Um, and yeah, there's these connectors that I purchased. Uh, one of them actually, or rather two of them, uh, is already connected uh, to the motor and stuff like that. And uh, this one is uh, 
well, I didn't really purchase this. This came from the battery itself. But you just got to notify the seller and stuff like that what uh, connector you need. But other than that, uh, it's been great. Again, I did literally <laughs> two videos talking about this already. Uh, I guess other stuff that I added here is handlebar extension thing. Uh, but basically, the original handlebar, which is this one right here, it's not wide enough for me. I mean, I, I could change it to a wider one, but I didn't want to just because this is like the comfortable, uh, you know, handlebar for me. And so I just added this extension and uh, basically mounted all my stuff here. Uh, my phone holder, I can link that in the description. This is fabulous, by the way, as well as Victogen uh, light. Uh, I've had this forever, actually, like four years now. Um, and then, yeah, that's basically all that I got for that extension uh, i still have the original bell right here but if you guys are wondering what this one right here is i did so many videos already about this uh not really like showcasing it though but rather just uh, sampling it but this is basically a bicycle horn that sounds like a car it's called loud bicycle i'll link them down in the description as well but uh, i've had this forever um i use it a lot for my electric scooter back in the day and then yeah it's become really helpful uh, with my e-bike especially riding at night and stuff like that and uh, yeah they're really loud sounds like a car and they are fantastic there's the little button right there that you just press and then it's gonna sound like a car so save me a ton from a lot of uh, close calls here and there with people not paying attention and stuff like that i guess some of the stuff now that uh, i've encountered with this electric bike mostly mechanical stuff um well let's start first with the spokes uh just like any bikes really um no matter what kind of bike you're riding if you're riding it for a lot long distance and stuff like that and if you're going hardcore on it you know you're doing jumps and stuff like that you are bound to have loose spokes maybe one two or maybe a couple of them i'm very lucky enough to not have a bent spoke yet or even a broken ones after reaching 1000 miles and riding it pretty pretty hard actually but I do have to adjust it, I guess, almost every single week though. Um, just because a lot of these, you know, the spokes basically comes loose and stuff like that. Uh, I think they're 12 millimeter size. I don't really know the sizing, but I'll link down in the description of what I use as far as the tool goes. Um, but basically they're just like spoke um, adjusters and stuff like that. And you can just, you know, tighten it and, you know, basically just keep it safe as far as like you know the integrity of your wheel and the spokes go so i did that for the front and back the back one is actually quite interesting though just because this one you have to tighten it like a lot tighter compared to the front one just because i think because of the motor right here and so yeah that's all i do uh, as far as like maintenance go uh you know major maintenance go um, no that's a lie actually i'm gonna talk about the major maintenance that i did with this which is actually the brakes specifically the brake pads uh, so i've actually replaced the brake pads once now just because it was yeah i mean 1000 miles of riding lots of braking you're bound to have a uh, messed up brake pads by then so i changed it out to like i think it's like a resin um brake pads but it basically fits the, this tectro one right here um it's not branded or i guess not that i know of but i'll link it down in the description it works really well i've been uh, riding it for about uh, 250 miles an hour or so with those brake pads and they've been amazing uh, so i changed the back and the front for that um and so just to make it even and stuff like that but overall they are fantastic all right so you guys might be wondering why i have this diy fender mud flap thing uh well for some reason this is the only thing i hate about aerial riders x-class e-bike by the way but their mud guards fender whatever you want to call these they are not long enough and they don't really do a good job as far as like protecting me from mud and splashes of water especially the back one right here like when i don't have this this whole back right here and my back part literally is full of mud dirt and grimes and everything so it was disgusting so i made a diy one uh i forgot where i got this plastic from but it's pretty flimsy but it blocks the water splashes and stuff and i basically just double-sided tape it right here
All right, now last thing that I wanna cover is the motor itself. So I've been seeing a lot. I'm part of a Facebook group pages uh, for aerial riders and stuff, mods included in the aerial rider, I guess, official Facebook group for customers and stuff like that. Anyways, I've been seeing a lot of posts about their motors dying after just reaching like 200 plus, 500 plus miles, not even reaching 1,000 miles. Uh, but those are like the newer version though. I'm not sure about the older version like mine, uh, but this one though is the Metal Gear version. It's called the Matsui motor or something like that. But um, apparently, and this is just what I've been reading from other people who have the same bike as me uh, and versus the folks who has the newer version. Apparently the Metal Gear version is better than the Bafang, like the newer motor. It's called Bafang, but uh, they apparently use nylon gear for the newer version while this one uses metal gear and what that means is apparently the motors will last you slightly longer compared to nylon gears uh, so metal gears versus nylon so yeah these are fantastic very torquey in my opinion and very nice i don't really use these and i might um, get rid of it someday but for now yeah i don't really touch it i've always set it to like the lowest level right there for the motor not motor what do you call these the shifter and stuff like that but i am noticing though that my chains might need to get cleaned fairly soon and probably greased and stuff like that so i'll probably do that once summer riding hits again but for now i have no issues with all things uh with this e-bike and it's fantastic aside from the tire the back tire itself but overall fantastic ride and amazing quality by aerial rider Anyways, that is all for the video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. A bit unconventional for this video, but I just wanted to try something new. Shoot kind of raw, just using my iPhone. Not a lot of fancy editing and stuff like that. Let me know what you guys think about the Aerial Rider X-Class 52V. I know some people have been able to reach 2,500 miles or longer, but I'm just really amazed that it lasted me this long so far, 1,000 miles with little to no issues at all. And I'm excited to see where this goes and will take me possibly in 5,000 or 6,000 mile range or even beyond that. Now my content is all over the place lately. However, though, I am going to try to post one more video for 2022. And that's actually going to involve my... Never mind. I I'm done for now. Catch you guys in my next video. Peace.